Hello my soccer universe, Serie A has us back and I'm finally getting to do the review video, yes with Monday games and you know Tuesday morning I usually work away from home so gotta go a little bit later but you know better later than never. Also before we get into the games I'm wearing Torino as you will see uh, they actually had the biggest uh, improvement in the expected table. Um, I also have still a few teams up there where I have not yet finally decided on shirts or basically better you have not finally decided on shirts but uh, for Milan the poll is still up for a little bit I have decided to take the shirt now that's last in the table because I think we won't see it uh, this season it's between the two other shirts I'll link it above please help me out <laughs> if you haven't already voted which jersey I should uh, go go for it is rather rather Overall, I have to say, going back to Serie A, I saw less than I expected, although I have to say, especially the first day, fully delivered for me already. Uh, it was a crazy opening game with six goals. We had Pazza Inter back. Um, we had a great spectacle uh, by Roma with wasting chance after, after, after chance with a rather entertaining game in Florence. Um, Napoli with a bang and it is really now as i say in on the title of the video don't sleep on napoli uh we have to see but that looked impressive and then juve needed a little bit, little bit going but di maria does what di maria always does G uh, show up and score and uh the prospect of facing di maria and chiesa yes Defensively, I have some questions, maybe also in the center of the park, a little bit for Juve at this very moment, uh, especially with Pogba out as well. But they also, this could be scary. Let's put it that way. I would say we'll jump right in. We'll start at San Siro, where reigning champions Milan took the field against Udine, a team that they, I think, couldn't win for in over a year. I think it was two 1-1 one, one draws. Uh, last season where uh, Udin Ude was just one of the opponents that you really didn't want to play against and it proved almost immediately because within two two minutes they had the lead uh, with very dodgy sleepy defending Rodrigo uh, Becau I think he had it in a corner uh, by Deo De Lofeo honestly that was not great <laughs> and I always say oh no and this season starts right uh again however milan to their everlasting credit and i think i have to get again a model they're never giving up and they're always gonna go for it and uh they get a penalty it took a while but they get the penalty that the hernandez uh rather routinely puts away and i'm uh, now curious uh going forward will be will be Piteo who's taking the penalties because that is always the question with milan kessia is gone now ibra should never see a penalty again uh so i'm really really interested and then a really nice attacking move via calabria the ball comes comes to Ravich who puts it in 2-1 after 50 minutes, uh, it's all uh, smooth sailing again, except you don't convert the uh, chances there and then you're again sleepy on, on the back end. Just before the half, literally, 50, 45th uh, plus 3, Massina scores the 2-2 and I think, nah, I thought this is going to be an easy win. Well, fortunately, Brahim Diaz had a really, really good, good game and he was right there again. First action of the um, of the half, it was a cross in. The defender makes a complete uh, craziness out of it, and, the, and Diaz just gets between him and the keeper and makes it three two. And then a little bit uh, later, uh, Brian Diaz assists Revic to make it four two. And then it was really really smooth sailing. Then the Belgian contingent could come on with uh, Sale Marcus de Catellare, uh, and late late on Im Origi Giroud came came on. So it seemed like a really really smooth start to the season. Although I still have questions about the defense, at least in this game. Yes, you need to find for yourself. Maybe I'm overreacting, but um, like with the win of Lask yesterday, I really thought, um, yeah, it was good going forward. I really hope they will get back to the defensive solidity, but first game of the season, all right. Moving on to uh, Atalanta, get a 2-0 win over Sa Sampdoria, then Lecce Inter. I actually was watching a little bit of, of, of the game, and when I made the preview, I said, yeah, I wouldn't be a Lecce jersey fit very nicely on this background, just for the uh, splash there. 
and yeah they have some nice stuff there so i have to i have to see uh, shipping from italy wasn't so expensive i need an italian friend who sends me jerseys for cheap <laughs> or free or something like that in any case um inter who are the title favor, favor, favorites as it took not long also two minutes to take the lead through Lukaku who has had it in however Lecce was always in, in the game and they get after they have a really quick equalizer and then uh, there were a few good saves by Handanovic in there however the longer the game went the more it became a defensive struggle for Lecce where they just were barely hanging on and you know uh, I'm already early in the season yes Inter's dropping points at Lecce Inter's dropping points at Lecce <laughs> with uh, really some uh, great chances that they missed in, in, in there and then uh, Lautaro crosses in Dumfries in the 95th last kick of the game scores the winner and I was almost inconsolable there because it, it, I was not needed <laughs> in, 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 in a way uh, these guys Torino uh, showed a monster a little bit uh, Miranchuk with a really nice touch um, and then uh, Sanabria with a great volley uh, make it already 2-0 in 66 and very late on only Danimoto uh, could make it one two. Um, I think this was Monza being, um, you know, it, it was kind of a come come just because everyone was so high on Monza, you know, Berlusconi, Galliani, and then yeah, losing at home to Torino 2 1 is probably not the greatest start to your Serie A campaign. I also don't know what Fiorentina fans are thinking about their showing against Cremonese. Uh, Cremonese, of course, they are a little bit on a high because, you know, coming up um, yeah, for, for, for some, a long time back in Serie A, um, find themselves quickly down uh, to a goal by Bonaventura, pull, pull one back through Okareke, Luka Jovic scores a typical goal. I think Jovic is very well at Fiorentina. I don't think he should ever have gone to Real Madrid. It was just a step too far. But I think in a, in a, in a place like Fiorentina, he actually could thrive. Uh, and then Escalante is for a really rough tackle sent off. So one goal down, one man down. You really, really think uh, this should be now easily Fiorentina. So I have a Cremonese. Make it a game, uh, uh, fighting, the, uh, the, dig, dig the heels in, and then the rest of the game was more or less characterized by goalkeeping mistakes. Golini, coming back from Spurs, um, doesn't look good at Bianchetti's equalize. I think it's a corn, corner kick, kick in that he completely misjudges and saves behind the line. But then Fiorentina do find the winner just when you thought that uh, they are going to uh, draw points. The goal is given to Mandragora, but it's Radu who lets it in. Uh, completely misjudges that high ball. And yeah, Radu, I still am very thankful to him for making that huge blunder to hand Milan more or less the title. Or taking the control of the title race away from Inter. Um, although the draw would have done as well. I really feel sorry for him with this because of two huge blunders for him. Uh, in his last two games, so I really hope he can pick it up and maybe uh, going forward will perform a whole lot better because uh, you, your career shouldn't be defined by errors at all. Uh, Lazio come back from uh, quite the, uh, the, the pick in a way, uh, find themselves uh, already a, a man down uh, in the sixth minute. Anatovic converts a penalty and then uh, you really think, oh, this is going to be tough for La La Lazio. Uh, uh, Suma, Sumoro, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to put this up here, Sumoro, uh, is uh, getting two yellow, yellow cards just before the half uh, and it's sent off. So it's level on terms again. Then De Silvestri scores, causing all the and who else but Giro Immobile scores the winner for Lazio. So yeah, uh, Arnautovic back with Bologna, um, not going to manage. And I think he fits very well in Serie A. I'm very happy that he stays at Bologna uh, in that sense. But yeah, it's not enough for Bologna. City rivals Roma. And you know, already the title race is heat, 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 heating up with Sari putting all the pressure on Roma and uh, Mourinho saying, well, we're not the favorites because we have spent barely anything. Yeah, maybe you didn't uh, play for transfer fees, but you uh, the, you have a super high salary. So I think this is really, really ridiculous what uh, Mourinho is doing. 
Roma played well at Salzantana. It was fun, however, wasting chances. I'm thinking especially uh, Dybala once uh, hit the upright. The goal came by Cristante, but I think it should have been a bigger margin. I think Roma will be fun to watch this season, not only because they play well, but I think it's a very combustible mixture there. So, uh, and that might just make it. Um, I'm still not sure where Roma will, will go. We have to watch this one. Uh, Spezia beating Empoli. Um, and then for me, a little, a little bit of Verona against Na Napoli. I really, th I mean, I don't know yet what to make of Verona this season. I really don't. They took a lead and were well in in the, in the game through Kev, Kevin Lasagna. But then a little bit later, Quarazgelia, newly acquired. And I remember he played brilliantly against Spain in, uh, was it World Cup qualifying? Um, where I think he scored two, two, two goals. I think it's a great acquisition by Napoli. And, you know, uh, everyone's focusing on the Insigne's gun and Therese Mertens are gone. Uh, but Therese Mertens was only, uh, you know, he, he was not a main player anymore. And Insigne... Yeah, maybe Quarazgelia can open up there. So I'm rather curious how this will happen for them. And Oziman, just before the half, gives Napoli the lead. So uh, really, really good stuff there. Right after the half, Henri, coming from Venezia, pulls uh, Verona back. And Verona were then really pressing forward, but get Kokona Kakonda, where Piotr Zielinski gives the Napoli the lead. And from that moment, moment on, it was... Uh, Cutting with a hot knife through but the uh, uh, Lobotka and Politano adding two more, getting Napoli top of the table. So uh, that was a statement by Nav, Napoli because everyone was rather down on Napoli and maybe don't sleep on them. Don't quite yet. I still don't, don't know. Was it Napoli being that brilliant or was it Verona, you know, uh, also losing again for a second time in a row, coach, 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 coaches? I mean, they're already the best up, but, but Verona has been a really good team. Uh, relatively good team in Serie A as of late. I am not sure will they be towards the end of the table, middle of, of, of the table. So that's why I, at the moment, this looks rather impressive by Napoli, but I want to see how it will be going forward. And then uh, last one was, of course, that um, Juve beat Sassolo. Di Maria giving them a lead a little bit against the runoff of the place. I saw had some good, good, good chances. As soon as Vlaovic converts the penalties, was only going one way. And then he adds a second one with a Di Maria assist. Um, if you've been watching his channel, I'm a huge fan of Di Maria. I'm not necessarily happy that he's at Juve. Even at this age, I think he is an absolutely outstanding player. And I still say everyone was talking in 2014 about Messi for Ar 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 Argentina. You could see... Di Maria is not playing. Argentina was not that great anymore. And I think if Di Maria would have played in that final, I think Argentina might have well won this one. I am that convinced. Uh, Di, Di Maria is one of the most underrated and unappreciated players uh, of this past generation. So yeah, Juve, in the end, it's a statement win. But, you know, it was a whole lot more... Uh, the. It was a little bit flattering, the scoreline. I think a 2-0 probably would, would have been more towards where it was. Um, of course, I'm going to give you the first standings, but it doesn't tell us much. But at, at, at least we see that, you know, uh, Inter 46%, Milan 23%, you with 13% for the champions, uh, you know, to become champions. Uh, Na Napoli also firmly in, in the other. Roma, Napoli, that's for, for, for me will be the fight for the fourth spot. Uh, and you also see again the, the difference between projected and expected points to the very right of the adjusted standings, which only really come into in play when uh, some teams have less games played and, and, and so on. But I think the that part is interesting. Projected standings means take your rating, how many points would you get uh, without taking into account the current results. Expected is what is what do you currently expect points wise? So taking the results into account. And you and if you have more, then of course you had a good good performance. We see the big bar with Torino. We see Atalanta did good. We see Napoli did well. Uh, also Spezia did, of course, uh, enormously well there. So uh, just here we can really see that the ranking that I put here up on the wall. But I think the most expo uh, is is the expected standings. Where it's still Inter ahead of Milan. However, you know it is four points, and the season is very, very young, so there's not too many changes from what we had before, except that Torino moves up uh, at the expense of Sassolo and Verona, uh, and on the bottom also we have a, a Spezia moving uh, up. 
Next week, um, we'll see, or next weekend, I should, I should say, we see Torino against Lazio, is, I think is an in, 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 interesting one. Um, I think it's all about Atalanta against Milan. I think it's the first big match of the season. Uh, other than that, I think there's not a really, really great one. We have a, a Tuscan dog between Empoli and Fiorentina. Uh, Fiorentina really needs to come back a little bit from that. I want to see uh, Inter, they should, honestly, Inter should put a marker down against Spezia. Let's see uh, that. And, you know, I, I think I have to take it as a go. I think Bologna against Verona could also be an interesting uh, match. But again, I think Torino, Lazio, Atalanta, Milan, those are the ones that I'm looking for. Uh, Sampdoria against Juve, yeah, I don't know. And Roma, Cremonese, Cremonese, two away game to start the season. Also not fun for them. Any case, please let me know what you thought about this round of Serie A. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!